And the other thing is, you know, you, you asked before about Ellie. Um, um, there was actually a, a there's this Russian uh, spy um, whose code name is Ellie, who they've never actually um, uncovered. Even today, they don't know who it is. Whoa. And it also like that in and of itself. It's not to say there weren't guys who didn't end up having trails go back to both, but the, again, the Nazis and Soviets, as you laid out earlier, didn't like each other. You had opposite ends in, in that spectrum in that respect you had fascism and you had communism so it seems like you know we had our mccarthy witch hunt here in america yeah this was kind of like the post philby witch hunt where perhaps yes there were obviously leaks there were guys who were part of this that's been proven in some ways for in many ways for some of these other guys but does that mean that all the people they're accusing including like dick ellis therefore you know have to be one of the one of the things that quacks like a duck here. Yeah, but but don't forget, you know, not not every Nazi was a fan of Adolf Hitler either, right? So yeah. you know, you've seen Valkyrie, yeah, and you know about Canaris and and all the all the the, um, the plotters against Hitler, um, Stauffenberg and and so on. Yep. You know, there were there was a, a core of officers who were against Hitler. Now, um, so the idea of you know a British intelligence officer having sort of some sort of cooperation with sort of uh, Nazi officers who were against Adolf Hitler kind of makes sense, yes. right? So there, there are all different ways that you can interpret um, a British intelligence officer having some sort of communication with Nazis. You know, it can you can see it in a very sort of dark light. You can see it in in that in that light, right? We don't know exactly what the 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 true information is because. This, his supposed confession has never been published. Right. We don't know exactly what was in it. We're only going on the say-so of Peter Wright, who wrote this book, Spy Catcher, which essentially he wrote to um, make money. He was broke and, and living on mm. the bones of his ass in Tasmania, right? He had to have a juicy story. So he you know, came up with this story about Dick Ellis. Um, so anyway, the, the, the point is, um, you know, I went through – uh, all these documents, these thousands of documents, went over and, and looked at the specific allegations that were made against Dick Ellis and came to the conclusion at the end of it that there really wasn't much to pin on him and that you really have to give him the benefit of the doubt and that if he had been, um, uh, you know, the spy that he was accused of being for the, for the greatest enemies that the West ever had, you know, there are other things that he would have, you know, given up to the, to the Russians and the Germans. You know, there's plenty of things that he would could have given, could have given up to the to the to, the, to Germany and 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 the Russians, and um, and he didn't. He why would he be why would he sort of um, be given the the Legion of Merit by you know Harry S Truman, in 1946 for his contribution to um, the American war effort. Why would he sort of be appointed sort of head of MI6 in in, in the Far East and, and, and North America, you know, post-war, um, if there was any sort of sort of doubt about it? Well, at the time, I'm playing devil's advocate here. Yeah. I, not that I disagree with your overall takeaway, but at the time, you know, Kim Philby got really high up because people thought he was fine, right? Yeah. So Dick Ellis could get, let's say he wasn't, Dick Ellis could get up really high because people think he's fine. They think he's a good spy, and then suddenly one day they're like, "Oh, he's not." Yeah, but some. But the thing is, you know, in 1946, if Captain, if this mention of Captain Ellis in this Nazi officer's interrogation report is appearing in a document, you know, Kim Philby's not the only one who would have seen that document. Sure. You know, so suspicions really could have been raised about Ellis as, as early as as 1946. Anyway, and it wasn't until 1965 that he was we were called in and asked to explain, you know, why are these Nazi officers sort of mentioning this Captain Ellis as a source of information. Did you have a chance to talk with any of his surviving family in making this book? No. Um, and the only contact I had was with his granddaughter who um, lives in New York City, I believe, mm. and... Uh, Ellis's daughter uh, lives in New York City, but his granddaughter wouldn't um, give me any access to um, uh, to his daughter. So, um, uh, because they had sort of been 
or they felt that they had been let down by other writers who, who had wanted to write a, uh, mm. anything about Ellis and they were very upset about um, the way that Ellis had been treated. His daughter had sort of returned all his medals to the British government after he had been accused of these things and he had died in 1975 sort of with this, this big cloud over his um, his life, his achievements, his reputation. Mm. Um, he died basically broke. Um, and, you know, for Ellis it would have been, you know, a bit a bit of pill, um, you know, to see if he had been alive, you know, the, the success of A Man Called Intrepid, which came out, you know, one year after Dick Ellis died. Yeah, this is a book we have up on the screen right now. Which, which um, you know, went on to sell 8 million copies and became this mega smash around the world and had a, had a you know, it was uh, turned into a, a movie with uh, David Niven. So, you know. And, and this Dick talked e all about him. And Dick, right. El Dick Ellis actually wrote the foreword for this book, you know. Before, oh, really? Before he died, right? So Dick Ellis is mentioned in A Man Called Intrepid, but he doesn't really appear in the book itself except under the code name Howard. So okay. he he was um, – it's a bit of a clue. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, uh, the code names they use aren't, aren't particularly sort of clever. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is, you know, you, you asked before about Ellie. Um, um, there was actually a, a – there's this Russian uh, spy um, whose code name is Ellie who they've never actually um, uncovered. Even today. They don't know who it is. Oh. So other than Kim Philby, this Ellie um, – is the most significant Russian spy that ever lived. And what was his? What, so let's let's go down that for a second. The Ellie, what was his? Obviously, they, in some form of intelligence, have been able to gather what his code name was. But what was his calling card as a spy? What made him so disastrous as as a mole? Well, there was a guy called um, Igor Gasenko um, who um, defected. Uh, and he said, uh, but basically there's this guy called Ellie. He's, he's been under your, under your noses all along. Um, he, uh, he is the, 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 the most penetrative sort of agent that Russia's ever had. And, mm. and what happened was that, um, uh, Basically, with the with the agencies of uh, you know the the United States and the UK in sort of this, there we go, Igor Gusenko, um, in in this in this lather about you know how Phil we had managed to get away with it for for, for such a long time, um, Ellie um, was the the biggest of them all, and 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 so much so much has sort of um, been written about Ellie and people have spent their whole lives trying to figure out who he is and there's a question about whether he's actually real or not and it was just a lie. Mm. Um, but, you know, uh, having written this book, you know, I mean, it's such a complicated story. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining it very well. But, no, you're doing good, Joe. But um, there are so many strands to it. it. It it really is, you know, getting into an espionage book. There's so many sort of rabbit holes that you can go down, and it's it's a bit of a mind fuck, really. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.